Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Education USA's Fascinating Webinars in India. Thank you for joining us. Today's session is on U.S. classroom culture. Before I introduce today's speakers, I'd like to share some information about who we are and what we do. Education USA is a U.S. Department of State-supported body, and our mandate is to provide accurate, current, and comprehensive information to students who are looking to pursue higher studies in the U.S. We have seven advising centers in India and over 400 world worldwide. For more information, please visit educationusa.state.gov. In our efforts to reach more students, we conduct virtual information sessions twice a month on Saturdays at 10 a.m. We invite you and your friends to join us for these sessions where we can learn more about the different aspects of higher study in the U.S. At this point, I'm going to ask all the participants uh, to please type in the chat box if you have any technical issues, and I will respond there and try to help you deal with them. At the end of this session, we will have a question and answer time, so I request you to keep your questions till the end. For today's session, our speakers are Agati Lele, Education USA Advisor at USIF Mumbai, and also an alumna of the University of Arkansas. And our second speaker is Manmohan Thorat, Education USA Coordinator at USIF Mumbai, and also an alumna of the Oklahoma State University. Agati and Manmohan, hello and welcome to the Saturday webinar. Thank you so much for taking time to present this session. We are ready to the floor is open. Um, good morning, students, um, and thank you for joining for today's session. Um, <coughs> so today's session, we are going to uh, talk about U.S. classroom culture, and um, we will try and go over some of the topics that you see listed on this first slide. Um, basically, the idea is to uh, give you guys information about what is expected from you as a student in U.S. university classroom, and um, try and understand how it's different from um, the Indian education system and how you can prepare yourself. So for today's session, we'll try and go over, you know, what is an academic session, um, what are the different uh, methods of instructions used in US classrooms, uh, what is the grading methodology um, overall, how the classroom culture looks like and how it works and how you can adapt and adjust yourself. Um, how do you keep yourself on track with your classes, given that it's going to be a very new environment? Um, and lastly, how to manage your time and how you can use um, the time and the available resources on campus, which can be academic and non-academic. Uh, so to begin with, um, I am guessing that we know in the audience we have students who are probably um, you know, joining uh, the US University this fall, which is fall 2019, um, and have received their I-20s. So if you actually look on your I-20s, you will see there is a date, start date mentioned on it, uh, which either says you know fall 2019, or if you're going next semester, it will say spring 2020. So in the US universities, the academic year starts in August or September, which is also known as the fall semester. Um, usually because, you know, the trees lose uh, the leaves um, and, uh, you know, they basically are getting ready for the winter. Um, it's also a very pleasant time on uh, most of the U.S. Uh, university campuses. Um, so the universities can follow either of the two semester systems. Uh, one is a, a semester system and another one is a quarter system. Uh, semester system involves two semesters per year uh, with a summer break. And quarter system involves three quarters a year, uh, including the summer break. Uh, it really does not matter what semester system your university follows. There is no preference. All the classes uh, that you will be taking are adjusted depending on the semester system. So moving on to the methods of instructions. Um, I know that, uh, you know, in India, majority of uh, the students are well aware of the lecture, uh, you know, a method of instruction where you basically sit, sit in a class and study different concepts, you know, the faculty or the professors go over uh, different concepts that are taught to you. Um, and that's, you know, how the lecture uh, instruction method looks like. 
In the US, um, the methods of instructions can be different. Uh, there can be combination of different methods that are mentioned on the slide, uh, or there could be you know, either of the methods used. It really depends on the field that you are in. It really depends on the faculty or the professor who's teaching the class. So it's really at the discretion of the professor what method of instruction that they are going to use. So they can exclusively use uh, only one kind, or they can have a combination of different methods of instructions. Um, also remember that depending on what classes you are taking, you probably will have undergrad a mix of undergraduate and graduate students. So even though the method of instruction might be similar uh, or common for both, the assignment structures might look different and we'll get to that in a little bit. Um, and don't stress out too much about this because usually on the first day of the classes, the professors make sure that they explain what they're expecting and what kind of method of instruction uh, they are going to be using. Um, US university campuses, uh, you know, also have large uh, international student communities. So the faculty uh, is well aware of, you know, how instructions are given out um, and, you know, to make sure that all the students understand um, how the classes are going to go. Um, so, uh, talking about the discussion method, a uh, lot of university, you know, uh, the classes in the U.S. universities do follow discussion method of instruction, where, um, you know, basically uh, you are asked to, you know, go over certain uh, material, study material before you come to the class. So some of the examples that I can think about uh, for graduate level uh, students, for example, uh, when you are in classes, when you are expected to read journal articles, especially for the sciences, and you are expected to you know, have a discussion in a class. Uh, in a lot of cases, you might be asked to read a discussion. Uh, for other students, for example, in humanities, you are expected to read certain books every week, and you might be asked to read a discussion and engage the audience in your class. Um, and you know that is a very prevalent method of instruction um, in classrooms in the U.S. Uh, the third one, the observation one, um, you know, it again depends on the field that you are in. But I can think about the sciences where, um, for example, when I was in my PhD program, um, I was taking certain classes which were field biology based. So I had an ornithology class where we actually had to go out in the field and observe. Um, and, you know, um, my class was primarily based on the observation. But there are other classes that will, you know, or you will also experience which are based on observations. Um, practical application. Um, think about, you know, a class uh, on filmmaking, for example, where you might have assignments where you have actually have to go out and you make a small film, which is a very practical application uh, of the coursework that you have to do. Case studies um, can mainly, uh, you know, uh, apply to students who are in business programs, and this can be uh, at undergraduate uh, as well as graduate level, uh, where you are expected to take on, you know, the available data, analyze it, critique, um, and, you know, uh, uh, write basically case studies. I can also think about students who are taking public policy classes where you know you will be uh, uh, expected to uh, collect data uh, and you know write up case studies. Um, experiential learning uh, primarily you know uh, is concerned with a uh, form of you know internships where you actually get hands-on experience. Um, I do want to make a point here that in cases of experiential learning, when you are doing the curriculum practical training, for example, just make sure that you are in touch with DSO, which is designated school official, and you have authorized, uh, you know, that sort of internship to uh, uh, to conduct during uh, the semester. The computer-based instructions, um, of course, for the students who are in you know, uh, computer uh, and information sciences, uh, you primarily have classes uh, or coursework which is based based on computer-based instructions. Uh, but I can also think about uh, those students who are pursuing many other majors and other, uh, you know, field, in the other fields. So for example, I had taken a lot of classes uh, in statistics and we uh, had computer uh, instruction-based classes uh, when it was about using a certain software. So it really depends on what coursework, uh, you know, you're going to take that will decide uh, what method of instruction would be like. Manmohan, do you want to take over? Uh, good morning, everyone. So as Aditi mentioned, uh, there are many methods of instruction. So that also means that if you were to calculate your GPA, Aditi, could you move, uh, move to the next slide? 
Yeah. So if you were to calculate your GPA, it'll be a little different for every class. But in general, uh, I'm going to help you out uh, with understanding how to calculate your GPA. So before you do so, there are two things that you want to make sure. One of them is uh, you talk to your advisor, your academic advisor, that uh, you have all of the course credits that you that you require. Um, and the other one is uh, understand what's written in the syllabus. So before any class starts, in the first day of class, you'll be given the syllabus. And in the syllabus, it'll be uh, detail. It'll be written in detail how the GPA is calculated and how the uh, the grade distribution is for the class. Now. Uh, the first thing about calculating the GPA is uh, whatever percentage you get in the class, the final percentage, it corresponds to a certain letter grade. So, for example, between 90 and 100 would be A, between 80 and 90 would be a B, and etc. Uh, and then each letter grade corresponds to a certain number of grade points. So, if you get an A, then you get four points, and if you get a B, you get three points, and etc. Um, so, the total GPA for that semester is calculated as the sum of grade points multiplied by the course credits. Now you add all of your uh, classes and then you divide the total sum by the total number of credits that you're taking. And that will give you the GPA for the um, for that semester. Now for people who are not familiar with this uh, system, I, I can talk to talk to you more about this in detail in the question answer session, but I'm going to keep this short so we can uh, cover more topics. So, yeah. Um, I would like to mention one more point with respect to GPA taking classes. Make sure that uh, for the graduate students, especially PhD students, that you are uh, in constant touch with your advisory committee, which decides what kind of classes you will be taking. Um, and you know, uh, depending on the credit hours that you require to you know that go towards your degree. Uh, so make sure that you uh, clarify and you have you know um, absolute clarity with respect to what classes will qualify to. That. Um, so coming to uh, what you know the US classroom culture uh, feels like. Um, so when you know we are um, in Indian uh, university campuses, we are very uh, so in Indian university campuses we are uh, you know, used to very lecture uh, form of instructions, which you know also means that you go to a class, you sit in class, uh, the professor teaches, um, you know, and the the class gets over. As opposed to that, <clears throat> in U.S. university classrooms, um, the classroom culture is very informal. Uh, you are encouraged to uh, you know, uh, talk about your viewpoints. You are encouraged to have a discussion. Um, you know, do a critical thinking. Um, and so, you know, it, it's going to feel very different when you start classes in the US. Uh, and I would suggest that, you know, be open to these ideas. Don't feel shy if you have something to say, uh, because that kind of behavior is really encouraged in the classrooms there. Uh, my only suggestion would be if, you know, there seems to be a point of view which disagrees with, you know, whether it's with the professor or the other students, do that respectfully. Um, you will find that uh, classes in the US, uh, the size of the classes in the US universities really varies. <clears throat> so when you talk about um, freshman level classes for the undergraduate students, you will see that, you know, uh, classes can be fairly large. Uh, there could be, you know, uh, up to 300 students in one class. Uh, so just, you know, just familiarize yourself with, you know, the class size will differ and vary depending on what kind of classes you are taking. Um, you know, uh, as you know, in India, uh, usually when you start a uh, school uh, or university here, you have a cohort of students that, you know, move from first year until they uh, graduate uh, from the last year, right? Um, unlike that, in the U.S., you will see that your class composition, so for example, students that you're going to see in different classes uh, really varies because you have the flexibility of taking classes in different semesters that you don't necessarily have here in India. Um, so so you probably, you know, you're not necessarily going to have same students taking the same classes throughout the semester and throughout, the, you know, the whole period of, you know, your, whether you're undergraduate or graduate level uh, program. <clears throat> As I have mentioned in the uh, previous slides, that the learning is really based on discussions. Um, I want to mention especially for the undergraduate students who do have to take classes such as public speaking, uh, 
uh, as freshman classes, you are required to, you know, uh, present in front of a class. You are required to engage the audience. And these skills are really important because they, that's what is going to get through, uh, get you through through the rest of the, you know, uh, your academic career uh, at the U.S. University. So it's really important that, you know, you focus on, you know, uh, expressing your viewpoints respectfully and think critically and do this work independently. Um, a lot of the classes, and this uh, might be more uh, relevant to the graduate level classes, where you know uh, the grading system actually depends on how you participate in the class. Uh, if there is a reading required for a class, you have to make sure that you have done the reading and you are contributing to the class because that will go towards your uh, towards your grade. That is also you know an opportunity for a professor or a faculty to to gauge how you're progressing uh, with respect to that particular topic or subject. <clears throat> One more, uh, over to you. So important skills. Uh, there are certain skills that you want to have before uh, you go to the States to make the most of uh, your that you've just created for yourself. Now this might apply to everyone undergraduate, graduate, or PhD level, but it's especially true for undergraduates because this will be the first time that you're uh, independent and you want to be able to balance everything to be able to perform the best uh, in the classroom. So uh, when you go to the US, you, you'll hear this, um, the three S's. So you have to balance the three S's. One is studies, the second one is social life, and the third one is sleep. Uh, it might sound trivial to, right now, trivial to you right now, but sleep and social life to be able to balance that, it's, it's a very important thing because you don't want that to be affecting you in the classroom. Um, so in the US, uh, there's a lot of importance given to independent thinking. So like you've seen uh, in the previous slide, in the classroom culture slide, uh, it's really, uh, they really look forward to your questions in the class. So they want you to ask questions to the professor. You want you to interrupt the professor if you don't understand something. They want you to even challenge the professor sometimes. Uh, as, as long as you're uh, uh, making sense and making good points. So uh, independent thinking is is a very important um, skill to have in the US. Uh, there's there's no culture of rote learning, which uh, some of you might be used to right now. Uh, over there, it's expected that you, uh, that you read some of the material before coming to class and uh, you participate and um, uh, you indulge yourself in, in the group activities. Uh, so you want to have those skills uh, developed right now before you go um, and that's that's all for now uh, if you have any more questions i can answer them in the question answer session all right uh moving on to there we go. Moving on to now uh, the topic of, you know, how you should prepare before the classes actually start. Uh, if not anything uh, that you get from this slide, remember that do not miss the orientation. That's one of the most important events that you should attend before the classes begin. Why? There are a couple of reasons. Um, why it's important to attend the orientation uh, one you know uh, it's usually depending of, uh, again on you know which university you are planning to go to the orientation can last anywhere between two to three days to an entire week it's almost like a, you know a carnival or a festival um, which also has a lot of you know uh, good things that are also going on but a few of the things that i can stress on is you get to uh, you know do a campus tour so, which means that you get to see all the you know major landmarks on campuses, of major buildings where you, most of your classes will be conducted. Um, you know, remember that you're going to a, a new country, a new landscape. It can be overwhelming. So, get as much help as you can when you arrive during you know the first week, the orientation week, uh, on U.S. campuses. So. Usually during the welcome session, uh, you know, uh, they will take you on campus tour, uh, you will have uh, sessions on immigration and how to maintain your status, uh, where you can ask questions about, you know, what if you plan to go for a trip during a break, what precautions you need to take, uh, if you're planning to uh, travel internationally, then, you know, what in the, from the immigration point of view, what all documents you need to prepare, all these questions will be answered uh, with respect to, you know, uh, to make sure that you're 
migration status is maintained uh, while you are on US campuses. <laughs> it's also a very good opportunity um, where you know um, the current students uh, will you know take you through the process of making your uh, student IDs, uh, getting your emails, uh, which is you know um, really important. Uh, I remember when I was going through my orientation, it really helped me because, you know, student ID means almost everything when you're on campus. Because um, I remember on my campus, my student ID was also used as a, almost like a debit card where I can put in the money, which I can, you know, just use my ID, swipe it in cafeteria or in bookstores. So, you know, uh, this is, you know, the benefits of having all those things are explained during the orientation week. So definitely do not miss the orientation. Um, another important aspect of the you know orientation is that you get to mingle with you know the domestic students other international students and it's a really great experience to you know start conversations with all these students um, few other things that you want to keep in mind uh, especially for students who are you know <clears throat> who are will be joining the university this fall um, sometimes the universities do send out informations uh, beforehand before you actually arrive on campuses about um, how do you register for classes online so uh, at least you can start with looking up the instructions on how you can you know uh, look up the uh, whether it's undergrad class uh, catalog or graduate class catalog and see what courses you will be taking uh, during the coming semester and the pro procedure to you know how you would register for it when once you arrive on campus it's always a good idea to find out the schedule for the classes that you're taking and go and visit the classrooms where these uh, classes will be held hold. Uh, because sometimes you, uh, you know, we are not aware of the landscape. We don't know how long it takes to walk from, you know, uh, one classroom to the other one. So it always is a good idea the week before the classes start that you figure out where all classes are going to be. Um, certain classes uh, will have, you know, as a part of the syllabus that, you know, uh, you have to go and find your classroom. And this particularly uh, is relevant to the undergraduate students who will be taking a lot of freshman level classes um, and, you know, have labs associated with these classes. Um, I remember one of the labs that I was teaching, one of the first assignments for the undergraduate students was that you have to go find a classroom and slide in your signed copy of syllabus. That way you know where the class is going to be so that you know uh, you can make sure that you're not late uh, trying to find the like, right classroom or a lab. Um, also during the orientation week you get you know uh, tours of important uh, buildings such as libraries or where the international students office is located where the cafeterias are located on campuses and finding your classroom can also be helpful because you can find out which cafeteria is close by if you don't have you know a, a you know a big break during two classes you can just hang out in the cafeteria and go to the next class so it's really really important that you do not miss the orientation and you know uh, get acquainted with all the facilities that the university campus has to provide you over to you Manavan. so Aditi mentioned most of the points on this slide uh, i'd like to make some additions which is uh, on the second point make friends i'd like to add make local friends so uh, like like uh, we spoke about exploring the campus, maybe the local friends would know shortcuts uh, to reach the buildings faster, or they might know the best restaurants in the city that you're in. So uh, that's that's definitely uh, something that I would recommend. Um, another thing is uh, on the first week of campus, and this is one of the most exciting things about going to an American campus, which is uh, you have a kind of a week of welcome. So one week before classes start, uh, there's like a campus carnival. And at the carnival, there are all the organizations on 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 campus will set up booths, and they they'll have the representatives talking about what their groups represent and what they do. Uh, you can have uh, anything from um, uh, recreation centers. Uh, you can have um, uh, cricket groups. You can have physics groups. You can have study groups. You can have uh, for under undergraduates there are also fraternities and fraternities and sororities. Uh, so to uh, explore all that the campus has to offer and um, another good thing about that that peak is there's a lot of free stuff that's going about so in the past in the six years that i was on campus i don't remember buying clothes because i was just wearing all the free t-shirts that uh, i would get at the week of welcome so uh, that and also I, i've never bought stationery as well so that's definitely i would recommend to check that out um, 
yeah, that, that's it. That's it for this. Um, so as we already mentioned about uh, attending student orientation and meeting with your academic advisor, these two things are absolutely really important before you start registering for your classes because they'd help you understand um, uh, which classes to take and what are your options, especially at the undergraduate level because you have a lot more uh, um, uh, freedom to what kind of classes that you take. Um, another thing is uh, make sure that your classes that you want are available. Uh, make sure that you um, uh, get them as soon as possible because uh, classes sometimes do get full and uh, you might not get the class that you want. And in case that happens, uh, I would again say if that's a class that you have to, you need for your uh, course, then you can talk to your advisor and, and figure that out. There are ways that you can do that. Um, another, just in general, uh, the first semester should be the semester that you use to get used to the the, um, the culture and uh, everything that um, that's different from what we're used to. Uh, once you get comfortable, then you can start pushing yourself. That's just a recommendation. Uh, only you know what's good best for you, but um, uh, it, it makes a lot of sense for you to take it slow in the beginning. And uh, once you get used to how to use the library resources, once you get used to um, um, the classroom culture, once you know the yourself. Um, so there's another thing that is very different about uh, the US uh, academics is you can add and drop classes. So all the classes that you take, you have to individually select them and add them to your um, uh, to your course. Um, and also another thing is if you take a class and you don't like that class, you also have the option of dropping it and you don't get an F. Uh, it doesn't show up in your transcript, but there's, there's definitely a deadline by which you're supposed to do that. Uh, so you have that option. Uh, I would definitely suggest exploring that with, with your advisor. Um, now this is for the graduate students. Uh, you also need department permission for registra uh, registering for certain classes. So that's a bit different from the undergraduates. So there are some classes that you need to talk to your advisor and uh, talk to the department in which you're going to take that class as well. So just keep that in mind. Um, and again, just in general, if you ever have any issues, the advisor is there to help you out and uh, is there to, uh, um, if you have any issues, if you don't understand something, like especially there are a lot of terms that we've spoken about in this presentation, like course credits and uh, uh, grades. So uh, you can definitely ask the advisor. It's their job to help you out. Uh, can you move on to the next? Slide. Um, just one point I did want to mention for the undergraduate students when it comes to registering of classes, don't think about only one semester. Give it a thought about you know a couple of semesters that you want to you know eventually register classes, uh, because there would be some courses that won't be necessarily offered every semester. So you kind of go through the uh, you know course catalog and make sure that the classes that you want to take are offered during the semesters that you want to take. Oh, uh, over to you, Manmohan. Yeah, uh, what she said. So um, the role of the academic advisor. Now, apart from what's given on the slide, uh, I would like to advise one thing, which is uh, when you talk to your advisor, let the advisor know what your capabilities are and what your weaknesses are. Uh, let me explain what I mean by that. Uh, for example, Indians in general, we are pretty good at math. So if you're taking a math class in the US, we not might we might not find it as challenging as a regular American student. And on the other hand, uh, if especially if you're an undergrad, if you're taking um, like let's say an American history or an American government class, that class might be revision for an American student, but for you, it might be completely new class. So that is one of the things that you want to make sure that the advisor knows about you. So you can have a better, um, a selection of classes that is better suited for you. Um, so that's there. And like Aditi, Aditi said, uh, you want to make a plan for uh, uh, the next semester as well, because sometimes what happens is certain classes are only available in a certain semester. That's definitely you can you can discuss that with the advisor and have a have a plan, have a flow chart. Uh, as they call it in the states. Um, Aditi, do you have anything to add? 
Uh, yes, uh, this is relevant to the master's and PhD uh, level students. You're not going to have one advisor, but you're actually going to have an advisory committee. So make sure that you know you, you read up information about uh, you know what consists of a, a, an advisory committee and what role they will play uh, in you know you choosing uh, different classes for a particular semester. Um, as far as um, uh, I know that you have, you can choose as many classes as you want, but you have to justify how that particular course or a class is going to help you in your research um, or, you know, uh, whatever that you were going to do during the master's or a PhD uh, project. Um, and my suggestion would be that make sure that you meet with your advisory committee and all of them are aware of what you're doing every semester with respect to the coursework that you're taking. Anon, over to you. Yeah, so first year of class is a really important class. Uh, you want to make sure that you attend it first of all, uh, because uh, in some universities, if you don't attend the first class, you're automatically dropped out of the class. Uh, so that's there. Uh, on the first year of class, uh, it's mostly the, it's a syllabus day. So the professor will outline to talk about the syllabus, the course overview and the outline of the class. Uh, they talk about the grading policy, midterms and final exams. Um, They'll have a calendar of all the dates of uh, the midterms and the exams and the assignments and the homework. So you want to have um, like a ledger or a, a calendar book with you because you'll see a lot of American students do this in the first day, which is uh, they they jot down all the different dates for the entire semester and they do that for all the classes. So they have a better idea of what's uh, how to plan out their entire semester. So like on Monday, you already know what all exams they're going to take this this uh, week and all the assignments that are due so you can start preparing for them uh, uh, beforehand so that you can do that on the first day um, there's also something called office hours so office hours are bas basically uh, time uh, put aside by the professors just for the students so this is the time that you can go up to the professor professor's uh, office and ask them questions that um, maybe you were not comfortable asking them in front of the class so you can definitely do that during the office hours and uh, if you have if you have any questions that you think you need some more one on one time with, you can definitely use the office hours. And then if there are no uh, there's if there's a um, a clash in timings, you can always uh, uh, contact the professor and ask for an appointment. Uh, that's always there. That's quite different from uh, the way uh, we do it here. Um, another thing uh, in labs. So when you saw the different uh, ways of uh, um, methods of instruction. Uh, one of them was labs and uh, safety procedures are taken very seriously. Uh, it's to the point that if you don't show up with the necessary equipment, they will not let you in because they, again, like I said, they take safety very seriously. So um, you might uh, read the syllabus before and they'll, they'll tell you about what you require. So for example, you might need safety goggles if it's a chemistry lab. Uh, you might have to use a, a full sleeved shirt. Uh, no sandals, uh, closed toed shoes, as they're called. Uh, you might need all of these before you can enter into the lab. And uh, the first year, the lab will actually go through all the safety procedures and uh, what to do in an emergency. So uh, it's it's a good uh, it's, it's a good time for you to understand um, safety, which is again in general the Americans take safety quite seriously. Um, so that's pretty much for the first year of class. Do you have anything to add, Aditi? Um, no, uh, I will move on to the next slide because we have kind of tight on time now. Um, so how do you, I mean, given that, you know, you understand, you know, uh, the assignments and how the course is designed, you want to make sure that you stay on track. Um, so be responsible and have a plan. Uh, you have to take classes seriously. If a class requires you to read, whether it's a journal article or books, make sure that you're doing that because the professors will figure out uh, depending on how you're participating in the class. Um, and I have, you know, already uh, just to reiterate this point that if you have, uh, you know, an opinion that you want to share, do that respectfully, uh, keeping in mind and be culturally sensitive, uh, you know, when you are in class. Um, 
with respect to you know uh, missing a class especially labs make sure that you know depending on what lab that is sometimes the material that is used in the lab is not available outside so by missing the lab you're not just missing points but you're also missing access to the material during that week so you don't want that to happen uh, in say, cases that you're going to miss a class uh, do let the professor know as you know as in advance as you can uh, so that the professor is aware of the fact that you will not be there and there's a reason why that's happening um, please turn in your assignments on time uh, i know there will be some assignments which require extensive work on computers so make sure that you give yourself enough time uh, before you uh, you know you have to submit the assignments with respect to the last point where you have like a group project or you have a discussion group now remember that you're going on a very different uh, you know, a, a campus. US universities have a very global culture, which means that, um, you know, you, you will be probably working with other international students and domestic students. So don't be presumptuous, you know, if you have a doubt, make sure that you're asking, you know, in your group, if you don't understand something, be friendly and, you know, be wel welcoming to different ideas from, you know, different students. Um, make sure that uh, you understand the policies with regard to the uh, you know how the project is going to um, go over um, that brings me to this slide that you know uh, as Manon had mentioned, make sure on the first day of the classes that you're taking down notes as to when the deadlines for different assignments you have for a particular class. Now remember uh, that you know the class the, the course design is going to be really different depending on what class you're taking. Some of the classes will probably have just the midterms and the final exam, but other classes will also have uh, pop-up quizzes. So you you are not you know exactly sure sure when the uh, the quiz is going to come up. So it's always a good idea to uh, you know uh, read up before you actually go for the class even though you you know, might not have an exam on that particular day. Um, as Manmohan had mentioned, that you will see in the first day of the classes that you know the domestic students always have fancy planners that they come in with because they want to make sure that they have everything in their calendars so that they don't miss anything. They can you know, uh, plan out if they have an event coming up. They can make sure that they they have given you know enough time, sufficient time to study so that they don't miss or their grades are not affected. Um, so uh, just to you know stress on again, make sure you're doing your readings, you're doing your um, assignments on time. There are a lot of different spaces on campus which you can use. Uh, you know some students might be very comfortable studying in quiet places. Uh, USC you know, university campuses are very good with the facilities that they provide. So for example, libraries or you know provide uh, you know different kind of you know places uh, within the building. So for example, the the university that I went to uh, in the library we had different floors assigned to either a study group which is you know a more noisy place as opposed to other floors which were quiet places where you know no one was really allowed to talk um, this might be relevant to graduate students um, uh, some of the libraries also provide you with cabins where you can actually have it's a locked space so you can actually put your stuff while you're doing your research in the labs for example and come back and study in the libraries uh, so the point to take home is that remember to be responsible and to have a study plan. Um, this uh, brings me to one of the most important topics in US classrooms, uh, academic misconduct, um, so, you know, with respect to cheating and plagiarism. Uh, we have not given enough attention on this uh, in India, but um, uh, it's a huge deal in US university uh, classrooms. Uh, it is absolutely unaccepted, uh, unacceptable uh, and comes with serious consequences if someone is caught with you know, plagiarizing or, uh, or cheating. Uh, just to uh, you know, uh, point out what's the difference between the two, plagiarism is some, something where you, uh, you're using someone else's work and passing it off as your own and not giving credit to the author. And you know this might happen unintentionally uh, and not always you know because you're trying to steal someone's work but uh, you have to make sure that you proofread your assignments multiple times so that you know uh, this does not happen cheating um, as opposed to that is you know you know quite literally uh, copying from someone else's exam while you're taking an exam in a classroom will be considered as cheating uh, the consequences for that are pretty serious so make sure that you know uh, you are aware of the policies um, 
uh, and you know uh, you don't get involved in anything uh, such as creation. So there are a lot of uh, you know resources uh, available, uh, especially you know free of cost for students on US university campuses that you can use uh, to make sure that you know uh, plagiarism is not happening. Uh, so one of the things that I can tell you is that on um, the university that I went to, we had a, a platform called Blackboard. I think a lot of US universities use Blackboard, where you, while you're uploading your assignments there, it actually has a software that will cross-check if there is, you know, uh, any, um, if there is you know any plagiarism that is you know uh, is visible in your uh, assignment um one point i do want to make sure that everyone understands here that uh, you know if you have a group project for example uh, make sure that even though the project is done as a group you are expected to write your reports individually uh, and you know uh, Please have this very clear in your head that even though you will be using the same material, same data, but the report has to be written individually. Make sure that if it is an independent assignment, that you're not sharing ideas or discussing that with other students. Manmohan, mm -hmm. over to you. So asking for help, uh, a lot of these points have been mentioned in the, uh, in the webinar, so I won't repeat them. Uh, I would again reiterate that you talk to your academic advisor if you ever need any help. Uh, so a part of your fees does go, uh, they do provide you resources in case you have, if, if you're struggling with the class. You can always talk to TAs, you can use the office hours, and you can talk to the professors and also you can talk to other students as well. So uh, always remember that help will always be available. Um, so let's go to the next slide. Uh, if you do have any questions, I can talk to them, uh, talk to you about them later. So student resources, there are, like I said, there are a lot of resources that you can use. Uh, libraries are, are these massive buildings with uh, multiple floors and uh, they have quiet session, uh, quiet zones and uh, they've got free printing and scanning. Uh, they've got computer labs so you can use uh, uh, heavy um, um, softwares. Uh, sometimes you can even check out laptops so you don't have to carry your own laptop um, a lot of class, some a lot of classes have free tutoring. Uh, there's something like a um, a small section of the library or the student union where uh, it is just dedicated for students who who need help with their classes. That is that is especially true for the general ed classes for the undergrads. Um, there's the campus advising session. Um, if you have if you have any difficulty, you can always talk to your professor. And again, like I said, you can talk to your academic advisor. Uh, there's also a really well equipped health center so you don't want to um, you want don't want your health or uh, any other thing uh, stress uh, come into uh, uh, affect your um, academic performance so you want to keep check on that that you're eating right uh, and uh, if you ever feel that you need help uh, ask for it um, that's all I'm, that's all I'm gonna, I'm gonna say um, so practical experience uh, it's very important that um, uh, that you get some practical experience and a lot, one of the reasons uh, that you're going to the states is because this is so uh, uh, pragmatic so uh, there's a there most probably will be a career center at your campus uh, you can attend information sessions uh, they have uh, things that really help you out in in terms of uh, uh, making you more um, professional which is you can go for mock interviews you can get your resume looked at and you can uh, get help making your resume uh, there's even they even help you with attire so like how to look professional um, what are the uh, expectations from you as a, a future um, professional you can definitely uh, explore that um, there's also going to be job fairs so on campus usually every semester there's going to be a job fair you can i would suggest go go for the job fair in the first semester itself so you can understand what the employers are looking for, uh, what prospective employees are, how do they approach them. Um, and then also it's a great time for you to network as well. So by the time that you graduate, you've already been to the job fair a couple of times. So you know how it works. So you're a little more confident by the time it actually um, is, um, is important to you. Um, and also start as early as possible. So the earlier you start, the more experience that you get. Um, all right, I'd like to end the uh, presentation with, you know, uh, this slide where um, 
of course, you're going there for an academic experience, but there is a lot more that goes on uh, the U.S. Uh, university campuses. Uh, apart from, you know, the uh, things that Manmohan and I have mentioned, make sure that you also get yourself involved with a registered student organizations. Uh, US universities are well known to have numerous uh, registered student organizations which are also called as RSOs. Um, you know, uh, some of them are going to be, you know, like for social things, volunteering opportunities, there are others which are academic. So take your time during the first semester and see what makes you feel comfortable and what is it that you can enjoy outside of academia. That you might not see at this point is going to help you academia as well whether it's through networking uh, whether it's you know just the exposure to the culture remember as i mentioned US university campuses are really global uh, you know you get to experience the global culture so be more open to domestic students and international students and try to hang out and experience the cultures mm -hmm. usually the international students office they do uh, you know um, organize uh, very regular events where you get to mingle with other international students and domestic students so um, you know, definitely do that. Join student clubs, especially for undergraduate students. Uh, for the graduate students, I would like to mention only one thing that you are going to have grad student councils. And it's a really good idea to be active in graduate student councils so that you, know, you can raise things that you are having difficulty with, uh, whether it's related to course or other things. Uh, but do, do make sure that you participate and you contribute because it's not just you, it's going to help, but you know, a lot of others incoming students and current students that it's going to help. With that, uh, we will open up the floor for questions. Um, I think there's a question about the credit system. Uh, Apathy, would you like to take the question? Um, sure. So one of the things that you need to understand um, is that every course uh, is going to have credit hours. So for example, um, you're taking X course, which is worth, worth um, so let's say that you're taking X course um, and it comes with three credit hours, which means that you're expected to spend uh, three hours a week in class or in lab, depending on whether it's a class or a lab. <clears throat> and um, as Manmohan had mentioned, based on that, you're going to, you know, depending on how the syllabus is designed, um, you're going to have a grade point system. So if you have scored, um, across all the exams and the quizzes or other assignments such as term papers if you have scored more than 90 percent you're going to be assigned a, a, a letter grade of a so on and so forth so this is you know for one class that you are taking um, depending on how many classes you are taking that will decide your gpa uh, which is calculated based on the sum of you know the grade points for that particular class into group course credits um, divided by the total number of credits that you're taking during the entire semester. I hope that answered the question. Man Mohan, would you like to add anything about the GPA system or the credit system? Um, not really. I think I think you did a good job. Right. Um, also, again, I would say refer to the syllabus because the syllabus will have it in much more detail. There's also a question that says, are there a minimum number of credits we need to meet? Um, Manmohan, would you like to have that? And are there yes, things that add on from the graduate perspective? All right. So for the undergraduates, yes, there's a minimum amount of credits that you need to take. Usually it's uh, 12 credits a semester. And there's also a maximum as well. Uh, so if you do want to go above the maximum, uh, you'll have to talk to your advisor. Uh, so when I talk about the minimum credits, it's for the regular semester. Now, uh, it might change for the summer semester if, you, if you're taking classes uh, in the summer. So that might depend from university to university. But definitely, it's, it's 12 credit hours per semester. Um, I would like to, you know, uh, mention one point here for the graduate students, especially uh, PhD students. Make sure that you talk to the chair of the department or, or your advisory committee and make sure how many credits need to go towards your research versus your coursework. 
uh, and that might differ every semester, including summer. So make sure that you're aware of how that works out for your particular program that you are in. Um, we have another question on credits and credit hours, the difference between a four credit course and a three credit course. Uh, Ma'am Mohan, would you like to take this? Could you read the question now as well? Yeah, I can't read the question. Could you, could you just repeat the question? Oh, sure. Can you see the question? Yeah, so the question is, um, are credits and credit hours the same? What is the difference between a four credit course and a three credit course? Does it show the level of difficulty? Uh, no, it's about the number of hours that you spend um, in a week on that class. So uh, the difference between a three, three credit hour course and a four credit hour course is that you spend one more hour at the credit, a four credit hour course. That's the only difference. The difficulty level uh, is, is not in the number of hours. Do you want to add anything other than your mind Mohan, about the difference between credits and credit hours? How do you understand that? I think you may have already gone over to that. Maybe you could just clarify them. Yes. <clears throat> um, so basically, just remember to uh, read up how your syllabus mentions what exam has how much weight because that will decide how the grades are going to uh, you know be total so for example for classes um, the midterm exams uh, are going to have a lot more weightage than the proper quizzes so if you miss one proper quiz you might not lose as much as opposed to missing uh, an entire midterm All right, oh, we have a question about uh, sharing this presentation. So I would just suggest that uh, this presentation is going to be available as a recording. You can view it later. If you log into the same bits.ly link that you use to register for the presentation, you will be able to view the recording of this presentation after the presentation is over. Um, we have a question here. How much time will it take us to be familiar and settle with the US classes and its pattern? Um, Adati, would you like to take this? Sure. Um, as I you know, mentioned in the presentation, that before you actually land on the campus, go through the course catalog and see what kind of classes are there. Uh, you know, um, nowadays, a lot of universities, uh, the departmental websites are going to have a description of the class. So before you even get there, you'll have an idea what all is going to go uh, during the semester for that particular class. Uh, you know, uh, for example, I remember uh, certain classes that I took during my PhD programs, um, had uh, only term papers as assignments. So we really did not have, you know, for example, quizzes uh, or even midterms. All my classwork was based on based on writing papers uh, throughout the semester. So it's, uh, you know, it's a good idea to look at the course, the course catalog and figure out what kind of classes interest you. And again, this will really, you know, vary depending on uh, whether you're going for an undergraduate program versus a graduate program. Um, I hope that answered the question. Great. Um, there's another question here about converting IB or AB scores to credits and when this should be done. So just remember that different universities have different policies about this. I assume this question is in terms of uh, acquiring credits in the US based on IB or AB exams. I believe that it's only relevant to IB higher level exams. Um, so this depends on the university and the particular subject that they accept and how many credits that they allocate uh, to that particular subject and the particular score you've received. So this varies from university to university. Often this information is available on a web page on the university website. So you can check that out and uh, um, liaise with the university on this matter if needed. Um, I think we can move on to the next question, which is, are the exams most compatible choice? Manmohan, would you like to uh, answer that? 
Uh, yes, I can. Uh, actually, it won't be multiple choice, especially at the undergraduate level. It will be subjective. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Um, so with respect to um, it, again, it really depends on what class you're taking. There will be certain classes which will have multiple choice exams. Uh, some of the lab work might have, you know, uh, multiple choice exams. Um, it really depends whether it's going to be subjective or objective kind of exams uh, based on the structure of the class. So you might have a combination of two or you might have exclusively either um, the multiple choice or the subjective test. But mostly at a graduate level, you you know uh, you are going to have more subjective uh, uh, exams. Um, I think there's a question about uh, Arakas PhD panel. If you would like to read out the question and do that, sure. Um, so the question is. Um, 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 how would the technicalities of attending the orientation work? Um, how do I know where to go or who to meet? Um, excellent question. Uh, your, uh, you know, um, point of contact before you land on the uh, campus is going to be international students office. Um, they are well aware of, you know, uh, the difficulties that international students face um, uh, as they arrive on campus. And usually uh, these, uh, you know, the international student office is very well prepared with, you know, information that they need to send to the students before they arrive. So if you have not received that kind of information, get in touch with the International Students Office and um, ask specific questions that you have about, you know, uh, your arrival or how to find the office, um, uh, how you get there. Uh, you know, uh, now uh, U.S. University campuses have, are very tech savvy. They have really good maps that you can follow. So even if you are new to the campus, um, you know, using a map, it's really easy to find different uh, offices and buildings on campuses. Um, but the uh, bottom line is that do not hesitate in emailing the international students office with specific questions that you have about the orientation. Usually your first place that you go after you arrive on US campus is international students office. Um, okay, Matt Mohan, I wonder if you could take the next question, at least uh, as is pertaining to the undergraduate experience. Uh, some courses have prerequisites. Is it necessary to take them as credited courses or can we order that course and study it? Yeah, so not only is it uh, necessary to take the course, uh, they're also uh, tell you that you need a B or a C and a and higher. So um, you need a good grade in the prerequisite course to be able to take the higher level courses. Are the teaching going to add anything from a graduate perspective? Um, yes, uh, from my experience, for example, you know, when I had to take some statistics related courses, there were some prerequisite classes that I had to take. Um, so it's always a good idea uh, to meet up with, uh, you know, your PI when you arrive on campus. At that point, you're not necessarily going to have the advisory committee in the first week. The process will, you know, start soon after. But, you know, get in touch with your PI uh, your, or your primary advisor and talk to them about this, uh, that, you know. Um, and that's why, I, you know, just to reiterate, you go through the graduate course catalog and see what kind of courses that you, uh, you know, you think you want to take. Um, they, they, you know, the course description will say if there is a prerequisite. Um, Avati, do you also want to take the next question on preparation for the meeting with the academic advisor? You could read out the key parts of the question. Um, sorry, I'm not able to read this question. Okay, so this question says, uh, I'll be sitting with my academic advisor soon to decide which course in the first semester. Apart from the points mentioned, what preparation can I do to ensure that I make a good decision on the courses to take? Um, all right, so this uh, actually is, uh, you know, relevant to both undergraduates as well as graduate students. With respect to uh, graduate students, what I can tell you, um, you might have, uh, you know, uh, for some students, you might have good idea about what kind of research you want to pursue while, you know, you are in that PhD program or the master's program. Um, I would say that think about um, what kind of, you know, uh, coursework that, you know, will help you 
you know, uh, achieve the objective that you have. Um, there might be some classes that will really help you with hands-on experience with some methodology that's eventually going to help you with your research. So I would think about that and discuss those things uh, with, you know, the experience that you come um, in with and um, the experience that you would like to get. Um, and talk to uh, your primary uh, advisor about that and based on that, make a decision uh, about the um, basically the the, uh, the course that you know you're going to take um, uh, depending on you know how where you want to get in the coming semesters <clears throat> Ma'am Mohan would you like to add anything from an undergraduate perspective yeah uh, this also might be applicable for the graduates but uh, you can look at the course catalog uh, you can understand all the subjects that you need to take and uh, formulate questions that you might like things that you don't understand in the course catalog so for example you might not know what electives are or you might know you might know what those are but you might not know what all the options are um so i would say just go through the course catalog and understand which all classes that you need to require you require to uh, take all right manmohan do you have suggestions for this next question i have problems with independent thinking so is there any way in which I can improve my writing skills based on readings before going to the US? Uh, yeah, so I mean, uh, you can't just uh, flip a switch and start independently thinking. So it's a process. Uh, I would, uh, so the US uh, education structure is, is structured in such a way that it helps you uh, um, think. Uh, another thing is when you give your SATs and the GREs and the GMATs, uh, while studying, uh, there is, a diagnostics in the beginning of the of the book so it does help you understand how to formulate the question how to make sense of the question and um, especially this is a great thing when you get a question wrong uh, it gives you an explanation of uh, which is the right answer and why is it the right answer you can think about that a little bit and uh, uh, maybe you can uh, discuss uh, things with your friends people say that read the newspaper but i would say like have people around you that uh, with, with whom you can discuss um, uh, ideas with. And it's, it comes with time. That, that's all I can say. Adanti, do you want to add anything? Yes, so as uh, Mamona has mentioned, it's a process. Uh, but remember that, you know, you have a lot of uh, facilities that are, you know, available to you on these campuses. Uh, feel free uh, to, you know, <clears throat> talk about these issues with, with your advisor. Uh, make sure that uh, you are interacting with domestic international students because it's not just for fun, but also to understand what kind of strategies they use, um, you know, for studying, you know, how do they critically think about the subject, uh, if you know any resource that has been very helpful for them uh, pursuing that, uh, so it's always a good idea that you know you uh, you you. Uh, are open about the difficulties that you have and talk to the right people. Um, Adati, there are uh, two questions from the same person. I'm going to combine them. Could you address this? One is what can you do if you're unable to register for a class, such as if the class is full? And the other, what are the issues that can arrive if we leave the class or two in the semester? So, other than you could start, and Manmohan, you can follow up with any responses from the undergrad perspective. Um, sure. So with respect to class being full, remember during the first week uh, after the classes start, um, there uh, might be uh, there might be a chance where someone will drop out from the class. So make sure you are in touch with the professor. So it's always a good idea, as I said, look up the uh, you know. Uh, course catalog, class catalog, and uh, get in touch with the professor if you see the class is full. And um, <clears throat> you know, mention that you're in, still interested in taking the class, and they can notify you if someone drops the class. Uh, it's you know, it doesn't hurt to actually go attend the class on the first day, so that after the class you can talk to the faculty and see um, <clears throat> if there are any dropouts in that class, and you can register right away. Uh, with respect to <clears throat> you know, missing the class. Um, so it, it, 
it really depends on uh, what kind of class you're taking and how it's structured. Um, there might be a leeway, uh, let's say that, you know, students do fall sick and you might have to miss a class or you might have, you know, uh, especially for PhD students, you might be going uh, for a conference and you are happy to miss the class. So it's, it's you know, uh, the faculty is very well aware of that and they do keep that in mind. And if you get in touch with the faculty uh, in advance, they will make sure that you're not losing points for that. Sometimes there may be makeup exams that you know you can take if it's an excused uh, reason that is you know uh, that is mentioned by the university so you have to make sure you read the syllabus uh, for that particular course very carefully manmohan would you want to add anything yeah i think i think she answered all the questions yeah all right then uh, thank you so much manmohan and adati for your perspectives and for you know making taking the trouble to present in detail from your experiences of classroom culture in the us it's really uh, a really good presentation and we really appreciate it uh, thank you everyone for joining us today we wish you all the best with your studies in the us if you're starting this fall we have one more presentation coming up uh, next month for those of you going for this webinar is on opportunities beyond the classroom and how that can enhance your career. So do uh, stay tuned to our Facebook page for more information about that. Thank, thank you once again. We hope you have a good day. Thank you, Deborah. Thanks.